now present George Edwards as the Hunchback of Notre Dame. In the previous episode, we heard how Johan de Moulin had been released from prison. The same day, Captain Phoebus de Chateaupère paid a visit to the Lady Fladely Gondolier. He questioned her closely, and she repeated her assertion that Johan de Moulin had been with her on the night in question. In the meantime, Johan had returned to Notre Dame, and he was in conversation with his brother, Dom Frollo, when Captain Phoebus de Chateaupère burst into the room. Captain Phoebus drew his sword and ran towards Johan de Moulin. Dom Frollo threw himself in between Captain Phoebus and Johan and ordered the captain to stand fast. Pierre Grignois, who was also in the room, cowered in a corner. Captain Phoebus, what means this murderous attack on my brother? The Lady Fleur de Lis Gondolaurier has convinced me that your brother did visit her on the night in question. Well, what of it? You apparently do not desire the lady's affection. You desire the love of Laura Esmeralda, the gypsy witch. You dare say that to me? I dare to say it, Captain Phoebus. I am the Archdeacon of Notre Dame. I am answerable only to my Lord Cardinal for my actions. I interpose my body between your sword and my brother Johan. If you harm me, beware of the wrath of my Lord Cardinal. I do not desire to harm you, Dom Frollo. I only wish to kill your brother. Have you taken leave of your senses, Phoebus de Chateau Père? Would you murder a man here in Notre Dame? If any harm comes to my brother, if there is any blood spilled here, it means the end of your career. That is true. Your cowardly brother seeks shelter in the sanctuary of the cathedral. I throw my glove upon the floor and challenge him to a duel. I challenge him to meet me man to man. You are a skilled swordsman and a soldier, Captain Phoebus. To meet you in a hand-to-hand duel would mean that you would murder me. Just as surely as if you plunged your sword through my defenseless body now. He speaks the truth, Captain Phoebus. I will tell you one thing, Don Frollo. If you cease the persecution of the gypsy girl Esmeralda, if you leave her in peace and have this charge of witchcraft withdrawn, I will spare your brother's life. Why should you wish to protect the gypsy girl? What is that to you? Has she not a husband to protect her? There he stands, in that corner. A husband to protect her. A cringing, crawling, spineless poet. You are the cowardly one, Captain Phoebus. You come here like a great blustering bully armed with your sword and insult all and sundry. Ah, I will not bandy words with you. Well, what is it to be, Dom Frollo? If you desire your brother to live, you will cease persecuting Esmeralda. I will have to give the matter serious thought, Captain Phoebus. La Esmeralda is suspected of being a witch. Therefore, she is an enemy to the church and to the state. And I have a duty both to the church and to the state. I cannot fail in my duty simply for personal reasons. The girl is no more a witch than I am. For some personal reason, you are persecuting her. I think perhaps that you and I could come to some sort of an agreement, Captain Phoebus. I have not come here to make terms with you, Dom Frollo. I have come to slay your brother. You have nothing against me. Why should you wish to take my life? The Lady Fleur de Lis swears that you were with her on the night that Pierre Gringoire was attacked. If you would spare your life, confess the truth. Tell me that she lies. If I do that, you will have me arrested and charged with the attack on Pierre Gringoire. You are in an unfortunate position. In either case, you will die. He will not die. If you will listen to me, we can settle this affair to our mutual advantage, Captain Phoebus. You mean to your advantage? I know you, Dom Frollo. You are a cunning, dangerous rogue. I would not enter into any bargain with you because I could never trust you. You are a headstrong and foolish young man. You have nothing to gain by killing my brother, but you have everything to lose. Let your brother confess that the Lady Fleur de Lis Gondolaurier lied. How can he confess that? I must know the truth. Please leave my brother out of the argument. I take it that you have come here on behalf of the gypsy girl Esmeralda. I have come here to clear the name of Fleur de Lis Gondolaurier. I promise that I will set matters right between you and the Lady Fleur de Lis. You are sure you are able to do that? I caused the breach between you. Therefore, I can mend it. Yes, I think you can. But then there is the other girl, Esmeralda. I will not have her persecuted. Well, let us declare truce. I will see if I can arrange for the charge against Esmeralda to be withdrawn. Then you will leave my brother in peace. So be it. 
I leave you now, but I warn you, if there is another move made against the gypsy girl, Yahan de Mulan dies. What can we do, Claude? He means what he says. You will have to withdraw the charge against the gypsy girl. I cannot withdraw the charge once it has come into the hands of my Lord Cardinal. That means that Captain Phoebus will kill me. Peace, peace. I will find some way out. You must find some way out, Don Follow. You caused all this trouble. If you had left Esmeralda alone in the first place, it would not have happened. I can tell you a way out. What is it, Gringoire? You can arrange that Esmeralda and I shall leave Paris. You can arrange that we are given a pass to go through the gate. No, no, I will not be cheated. I have had enough trouble over this gypsy girl as it is. I will find a way to defeat both Esmeralda and Captain Phoebus. Have you gone mad, Claude? Let the girl go and forget about her. This time you have been defeated, Dom Frollo. You dare not make an attempt on the life of Captain Phoebus de Chateau Pierre. The best thing you can do is to allow me to take Esmeralda away from Paris. Bow to the inevitable. I am never defeated. You are simply a brainless fool, Pierre Gringoire. And it is your misfortune that you have been dragged into this affair. By my own cowardice, I might have killed the feeling which Esmeralda has for me. I was afraid of you, Dom Frollo. But since hearing the way that Captain Phoebus spoke with you, I am no longer afraid. I shall return to Esmeralda. I shall ask her pardon once again. And I know that we will escape from your clutches. You are such a coward that you will never be able to harm anyone. Now you may go. I leave you in a much happier frame of mind than that in which I came here, Don Frollo. I think your wings are clipped. I have no liking for Captain Phoebus, but somehow I feel he will make you leave Esmeralda in peace. I take my leave. They laugh and sneer at us, Claude. You are powerless to do anything. I am not powerless. I have a scheme. Phoebus de Chateau Pair is to die. Phoebus de Chateau Pair to die? He is one of the king's officers. We cannot harm him. We shall kill him, and Esmeralda will be blamed for it. You will have to help me, Johan. By doing this, we have only to defeat Captain Phoebus and replace Esmeralda's life entirely in my hands. I know what this means, Claude. I will be expected to take all the risk. I will be expected to attack Captain Phoebus while you skulk in safety here in the cathedral. I am to endanger my life so that your plans will succeed. Peace, peace, Johan. You will be well paid, and there will be very little risk. Uh, there will be none for you. And in any case, it will be impossible to attack Captain Phoebus without raising a public outcry. We do not care for the public outcry, as long as Esmeralda is blamed for the deed. Everyone knows that Phoebus dances attendance on her. And if the lady Fleur de Lis is jealous of Esmeralda, then why should not Esmeralda be jealous of Fleur de Lis? I am beginning... To understand. It is a very simple plan. Once I have Esmeralda in my power, then and then only will I be satisfied. Tell me your scheme. Wait. I thought I heard a dragging step outside. It might be Quasimodo. Is there anyone out there? I cannot see anyone. Oh, your conscience makes you imagine these things, Claude. Come in and close the door and let us discuss this scheme. Some time after Johan de Moulin and Dom Frollo had hatched their devilish scheme, the hunchback left the Cathedral of Notre Dame. He hurried along the street, paying no heed to the cheers which greeted him on either side. Quasimodo was used to that treatment. Eventually, he arrived at the tavern of the Cœur de Marat. He reached Esmeralda's room and tapped on the door. Uh, Esmeralda, I have come to warn you. Beware of Dom Frollo and beware of Jahan de Moulin. There is no need to warn me against those two, Quasimodo. I know they hate me. You are in deadly danger. I have come to tell you this because you mean so much to me, Esmeralda. I have told you before that I owe a duty to Dom Frollo, a duty which I can never repay. But you mean more to me than Dom Frollo. I would not see you placed in his power. I beg of you for your own sake. 
to be where? I thank you, Quasimodo. I might have risked my life by coming here, but I ask nothing but your gratitude. Oh, you have my gratitude. If only you could leave Paris. Tell me of this plot. You know what Don Solo intends to do? I can say no more. I only know that they intend to do you great harm. Your life is in danger, and the life of Captain Phoebus de Chateaupe is in danger. You say Captain Phoebus is in danger? Yes. I did not hear all that they were planning. Dom Frollo suspected that I was listening. But I did hear that they intended to kill Captain Phoebus, and perhaps to kill you, too. Oh, I thank you for coming to me, Quasimodo. I shall go to Captain Phoebus and warn him. It must not be known that I warned you. I have my own life to consider. I know that, Quasimodo. I will not tell Phoebus where I got my warning. Don't follow. Yes. You do not seem pleased to see me, Esmeralda. Nor you, Quasimodo. I thought you might have come here, you misshapen dog. Hunchback cringed away as Dom Frollo approached him. Esmeralda stepped forward and stood between Dom Frollo and the unfortunate Hunchback. Will Dom Frollo's devilish scheme succeed? What fate lies in store for Esmeralda? We shall hear that in the next episode of The Hunchback of Notre Dame.